And lesson 5.2 is on adding and subtracting fractions. In this case, these fractions do not have like denominators, meaning that these numbers are in different forms. Okay? It's like adding feet and inches together. If you have two feet and you add two inches, do you have four something? No, you have two feet and two inches. Yeah, you have just two feet and two inches. In order to figure out how many total inches you have, you have to convert one of them to inches. Right? Okay, I'll have to bring it then. So what we're doing is we're thinking of these fractions as having a denominator that is like a label for the number. And so in order to add or subtract them, the numbers have to be in the same form. They have to have the same denominator, okay? Look at this first one, 3 fifths and 3 tenths. If we were to draw out 3 fifths using these models, which one might represent 3 fifths? Or which model could we use to find 3 fifths? Andrew? D. D. Okay, this one is in fifths, but it's, um, this one is highlighted four fifths. Oh. Okay. All right? So you're close. There must be another one that has three fifths in it. See another one with three fifths. F. F. F has three fifths. Here it is. One, two, three. And how many tenths is that? When we look at this line, this shows the exact number in tenths. How many tenths is that? Count up those tenths. Three fifths equals? Six. Six tenths. And if we were to multiply three times two, you'd get six. And if we multiply five times two, you'd get ten. That's how you convert it to tenths. So, three fifths plus three tenths would give us the same as six tenths plus three tenths. Using this model, you can see that three fifths is equal to six tenths. And so in order to get these numbers in the same form, in order to get them as both tenths, we use six tenths instead of three fifths. And then we can add these together because they're all in the same form, or they're all the same size. What is the answer? Uh, nine, nine tenths. Okay? So what I want you to do for each of these is to um, draw on the model like I'm doing and write down the numbers next to them. Let's do number two together. Five eighths plus one fourth. Which model could we use to help us with five eighths plus one fourth? Sophie. C. C. Let's look at C. We've got five eighths plus one fourth. And here is the line we call that a line of equivalence, or an, a line of equality. <coughs> and what does it show one-fourth is equal to? <coughs> How many eighths? Uh, uh, two. Two. Two eighths. So this is five eighths plus two eighths, which equals? Seven eighths, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's how I want you.
happy to use these models. Okay. So this is a little bit higher thinking than just understanding the or doing the math. Okay. Using or thinking in terms of models is a little bit more challenging, but it also helps you with your understanding of it. How about number three? One minus two thirds. Which one helps us with one minus two thirds? Um, uh, the B. Yeah, B. Look at this model. We're starting with three thirds, and then cross out two of them. Three thirds minus two thirds equals one third. Okay. Number four, which one helps us with number four? Otto? G. So these are in sixteenths. Draw the line of equality. So we've got how many sixteenths? on the left side. Seven. Seven. Yep. Yeah. Seven. Seven sixteenths plus six. six. Six sixteenths. Three eighths equals six sixteenths. Is this making sense? Yes. Yeah. This is going to be on the test. These concepts that we're working on right now are going to be on the test. I'm using models to help us with added addition and subtraction. Okay? Do we have to use the models for this? Uh, in order to get that test question right, you're going to. Yep. So we don't have to do it This that is the assignment. Yep. It's to practice using the models. Okay. So finish five through eight as part of your assignment. And then we're going to need to go to the book. Page 144. Open up your books to page 144. And we need to talk about uh, finding a common denominator. Okay? So you're going to need to just write down these words. Less than 5.2, adding and subtracting fractions. Find a common denominator. Then add or subtract. Then how do you find a common denominator? We'll talk about that. So we talked about the importance of having a common denominator. That way you have all of the pieces in the same size. All the pieces are the same size when you have a common denominator. To find a common denominator, I'm going to raise, raise this example, and then I'll do it again for you. Okay. To find a common denominator, you think about what do both numbers, both the numerator, or sorry, both denominators go into? Both 8 and 6 go into 24. So we're going to have to know or use a multiplication chart to, to figure out and to help us find a number that both 6 and 8 go into. One of the numbers that you can always use to find a common denominator 
is the other number. If you need to, if you can't find a smaller number, you can always use the other number. So we could use 6 and 8 to find a common denominator. And then what you have to do is find an equivalent fraction by multiplying the top number and the bottom number by the same number. So if you multiply 8 times 6, you have to multiply 5 times 6 and then write the equivalent fraction, 30 to 48. And you have to do the same with the other one. And you can, we're adding these by the way. <clears throat> and then write that equivalent fraction, 8 to 48. And now, both denominators are the same. So all the pieces are the same size now, just like on your worksheet. And then you can add them, find the answer. 38, 48. But you have to put it in lowest terms. So since both of these are even, you can divide them both by 2 and cut the numbers in half. What's half of 38? Does anyone know? Danny? 19. 19. Yep. What's half of 48? 24. 24. And is that in lowest terms? Yes, because 19 is a prime number. Nothing else goes into 19. And 19 doesn't go into 24. So we know we have lowest terms. Okay. Here's a model for subtraction. Starting with 3 fourths, taking away 5 eighths. We had to cut this into 6 eighths and then take away 5 eighths so that we are taking away the same size pieces and you're left with 1 eighth. So make sure you write down, find a common denominator, then add or subtract. Find a common denominator by asking what do both denominators go into and then Multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same number, which gives us equivalent fractions that we can add or subtract. Okay? That's the notes. Any questions on the notes? Does everybody understand what to do? Yes. 